It's hard to believe it's been over three decades since Samantha Fox first burst onto the music scene, but now at 56, she looks as radiant as ever. So sit back and relax and try not to gasp as we look closely at Samantha Fox today. Modeling Samantha Fox was a famous model and pinup girl in the UK during the 80s. She gained her initial fame as a page three girl, a topless model who regularly appeared in the UK tabloid paper The Sun. Her striking blonde hair, natural curves, and cheeky girl-next-door persona made her one of the most photographed women of the decade. Despite retiring from glamour modeling in 1986, she's continued to bear some skin occasionally. In 1995, she returned to page 3 to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the feature, posing topless for a week. The following year, she appeared on the front cover of Playboy's October 1996 issue, wearing the iconic pink bunny outfit and holding a colorful guitar. Inside the magazine, she was featured in an eight-page spread that included an interview, which was even more revealing than her cover photo. Throughout her career, she's been known for her sex appeal and provocative image, which has made her a popular figure in the modeling and entertainment venues. Music in addition to her successful career as a model and pinup girl, Samantha was also a renowned singer in the U.S. Her suggestive and spirited dance pop hits like Naughty Girls Need Love Too, Touch Me, I Want Your Body, and I Want to Have Some Fun all became top 10 hits in the U.S. and three of her parent albums charted on the Billboard 200. She continued to release music that showcased her diverse musical range. She released her fourth studio album, Just One Night, in 1991, which featured the single Hurt Me, Hurt Me, But the Pants Stay On. Her 1998 album, 21st Century Fox, was a Eurodance-heavy project that included a cover of lounge pop classic Perhaps, Perhaps, Perhaps. In 2005, she embraced her rockier side with the release of Angel with an Attitude. Aside from her albums, Fox has also released numerous hits collections, remix albums, and covered songs like Donna Summer's Hot Stuff and Madonna's La Isla Bonita. She's also collaborated with other artists, including Call Me, a duet with fellow 80s European model singer Sabrina. Initially, Fox faced criticism and skepticism from the music industry, as many doubted her abilities as a singer. But she quickly proved her critics wrong and found her sound, which led to continuing success in the music industry. In fact, she's seen a remarkable resurgence in popularity in recent years, with many young people discovering and appreciating her music. She continues to tour worldwide, and her fans appreciate her songs for their anthemic choruses and storytelling. Acting Aside from modeling and music, Fox has dabbled in acting. She attended drama school from a young age, and in 1987, she took on the role of Charlene in the action comedy Three Kinds of Heat. Three years later, she guest starred in the final season of the spin-off sitcom Charles in Charge. Since then, her acting career has been sporadic, with several years passing between roles. Her second speaking role came in 1999 in the British comedy The Match, where she played the character Patsy. She followed that up with a role as Karen in the 2015 horror Seven Cases. Her performance in Seven Cases seemed to reignite her passion for acting, and she's since played Miss Moore in the fifth installment of the Sharknado franchise and signed up to appear in A Night in Red trilogy, a miniseries based on the Jack the Ripper murders. But her most notable acting credit is in the 1995 Hindi movie Rock Dancer. She flew in from London to Mumbai to film a single scene in which she sang and danced to a track named Traffic Jam. This brief appearance made her reportedly the first Western woman to appear in a Bollywood film. Fox later wrote on Facebook she was very proud of this experience and described it as amazing. Love, Life, and Sexuality her personal life has been the subject of media attention. During her rise to fame, she was rumored to have dated Kiss guitarist Paul Stanley and Australian career criminal Peter Foster. But in 1999, rumors surfaced that she was in a relationship with Chris Bonacci, the former girl school six-stringer with whom she worked on her 21st Century Fox album. Fox later acknowledged she was dating Myra Stratton, her manager, despite not responding to rumors at the time. In a 2017 interview with The Guardian, she explained she had been scared to come out but realized she could no longer live a lie. She had discussed her fears about revealing her sexuality during an appearance on the British daytime chat show Loose Women in 2016. According to The Sun, she expressed concern she might lose her fan base once the truth got out. Thankfully, the public reaction to Fox's coming out was more positive than she had feared. 
In fact, she described it to The Guardian as no big deal. She has since become a patron of the Albert Kennedy Trust, an initiative designed to help those in the LGBTQ community who have been heartlessly disowned by their families. She has also teamed up with Sir Ian McKellen to support the organization. Six years after telling the world about her relationship with her manager, Samantha Fox revealed to OK Magazine that the pair planned to marry in a civil partnership. It sounded like it would be quite the event, with the star adding that she wanted Motorhead's Lemmy to walk her down the aisle and Boney M's Liz Mitchell to serve as officiator. Unfortunately, the ceremony never came to fruition. In 2013, Stratton received a cancer diagnosis and sadly passed away at age 60 two years later. Fox, who had been in a long-term relationship with Stratton, expressed her grief and paid tribute to her partner on Instagram. During her appearance on Celebrity Big Brother in 2016, Samantha Fox revealed she had found love again with Linda Olsen, a mother of two from Norway. Shortly after, she confirmed Olsen was her partner. By February 2020, the couple had announced their engagement and were busy planning a summer wedding. But due to the COVID-19 pandemic, they postponed their plans. Eventually, they tied the knot in a beautiful ceremony in Surrey, England. The couple appeared on Good Morning Britain as newlyweds and spoke about how they had met at a concert six years earlier and felt an instant connection. Unfortunately, just before the wedding, Fox discovered a lump in her throat and had to undergo surgery to remove it. Despite the health scare, the couple was able to celebrate their love and commitment to each other in a beautiful ceremony surrounded by family and friends. Recent Tragedy the sudden death of her younger sister, Vanessa, has left Samantha Fox devastated. Vanessa suffered a heart attack at her home in London and passed away at age 50, just days after collapsing. The mother of four had been placed in an induced coma at St. Bartholomew's Hospital after being rushed from her home. The news of Vanessa's death is the latest in a series of heartaches for Sam, who only had one full sister from her father's first marriage to her mother, Carol Ann Wilkin. Sam reportedly spent time with Vanessa before she passed away and is reportedly distraught as she adjusts to the loss. The former glamour model and singer has faced her share of personal struggles, including caring for her partner of 16 years during her battle with cancer. A representative for Sam expressed her gratitude to the doctors and nurses who cared for Vanessa and asked for privacy for Sam and her family during this difficult time. Paternal Controversy Samantha Fox's relationship with her father, John Fox, who also acted as her manager during the height of her career, was fraught with controversy. John was described as abusive and controlling, and his behavior reportedly became increasingly erratic as he battled issues with drugs and alcohol. In 1991, she alleged that her father physically beat her, leaving her with a black eye and fractured ribs. She fired him as her manager at this point, but she soon discovered he had embezzled a significant portion of her earnings and had failed to pay her taxes for three years. Samantha filed a lawsuit against him, which was successful, but the settlement she received went solely towards paying her tax bill. By their strained relationship, John attempted to reconnect with Samantha years later when he was offered a book deal about their life story. She declined the offer, and they remained estranged until John's death in 2000. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Samantha Fox? Let us know in the comments section below.